All right, so who's ready to get upside down? You've probably been practicing handstands for a while, but you can't quite get that handstand hold. And I'm here to help you. I've taught thousands of people. I have a handstand program with a fellow yogi friend of mine, and we have literally trained thousands of people. I know exactly what it takes to get you upside down. But first, you're gonna have to follow my system because this isn't like a normal handstand tutorial. I'm not just gonna talk about your fingers, your placement, and proper form. Instead, I'm gonna give you all of the tools necessary to learn the handstand. First, you're gonna break the fear. Yes, of course, you're gonna learn proper fundamentals, and of course, you're gonna learn the exercises necessary to practice and to get comfortable upside down, but you're also going to need to train your body physically. A handstand is a physical move. That means you need the proper mobility and the proper strength. Once you have broken the fear of falling, well, then you can start to kick into the proper area to be able to hold your handstand. You guys ready to dive in, ready to get upside down? Let's get after it. All right, so as I mentioned, the most important step is learning how to fall. Now I see a lot of people practicing handstands and they're new to it, so they do this. Now, they're not quite kicking up into that perfect line because they know if they go one inch past this, they're gonna fall over and they're gonna splat. Now, this is why I say learning how to fall because you should never splat. You should have enough, call it courage, or you should not be scared in order to kick up to that proper line. Now, the only way you're gonna be able to do that is if you feel comfortable going over. Now, what do I do if I kick up too hard and I go over? Well, I simply turn the wheel and I do almost a cartwheel. So that's what you should practice before you try to practice holding a handstand. You should get so comfortable kicking up and bailing. So most people bail to one side, but what I want you to do is almost practice cartwheels first. So you can step left foot, left hand, you can cartwheel. Once you have the cartwheel down, which this might take you running back to your childhood years, get your cartwheel back down. Once you have your cartwheel down, instead of doing it from the side, do it like a handstand, going forward, hands like this, but bring your hands down and then still cartwheel. And as you get more comfortable with that, you should be able to break that fear of falling because what I never wanna see is what I'm gonna show you for the sake of the demonstration is this. Kick up and Ugh, splat. We don't want that. If you're doing that, then you're gonna be a little too scared to kick up to that perfect line. So first, break that fear. Practice your handstands, practice falling, become one with the ground, love the earth, get dirty, and then we can move on to step number two. All right, so once you've broken that fear of falling, next important thing is to understand proper hand placement. Now, big mistake I see when most people handstand is they don't consider that your hand, when connected to the ground, is a foot. Now let me explain what that means. When your hand is on the ground for a handstand, you should have your weight distributed evenly across all of the fingers. If you look in the camera, you can almost see my fingertips are turning white because I'm squeezing the earth. What I see a lot of people do is they have loose fingers and they handstand like this on the heel of their hand, just digging in the heel. Now, if you think about your feet, if you look at my feet, I never stand with my toes up, just walking on my heels, right? My toes are always down to give me a good base in whatever it is I'm doing. Same thing with my hands. I want to create a foot with that hand. Boom, nice, strong on the earth. Not fingers together, fingers nice and wide. Now facing the camera, fingers nice and wide. Notice the placement of both of my hands. Almost like two field goals. These are going to be parallel and my hands are going to be like this. Why? Because as my weight goes over, I can fight back with my fingers. My hands are like this, I don't have much ability with my thumbs to push back. So I wanna be able to push forward and backwards. So nice, strong hand placement. You'll also notice that if your fingers are flat, you only have so much strength at the end of your range of motion to push back and forth. This is part of the strength that you will build while practicing a handstand, the necessary strength to adjust and hold yourself upside down as you start to wobble. So sometimes you'll see people bending those fingers and almost doing Spider-Man fingers because this kind of gives you even more strength because once you break that chain, you have more strength. If you think about it like this, you can only bicep curl so much with straight arms, but if you bend it, you have more strength. So you can bend your fingers a little bit to get more strength. So that's your hand and your finger placement. Your hand should be about shoulder width apart. Engage those fingers, squeeze the earth. And that's number one. And now we're gonna move on to number three. And we're gonna start getting you into some handstands. All right, so you've broken the fear of falling. 
you understand proper hand and finger placement, now you need to learn the kick. So when it comes to a handstand, especially for people that are new, you need to remove as many variables as possible. What that means is you need to stick with one thing, whatever that is. So instead of kicking sometimes like this, instead of kicking sometimes like this, or sometimes like this, pick one. Find the one that's most comfortable for you. My suggestion is get your hands in the proper position and you never wanna kick from back here. If I kick from back here, then what I'm doing is I'm just swinging my legs. But how am I supposed to hit the brakes if I'm swinging? So what I wanna do is instead of swinging into a handstand, I wanna unfold into a handstand. If I drive my inertia upwards, it'll stay upwards. But if I swing it this way, then it's gonna wanna keep going that way. So that's just normal science, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna walk my feet as close to my hands as possible. Now I'm not that flexible, so notice my knees bent. And instead of swinging this leg like this, I'm gonna kick it up, right? So here, and I kick up. And now I'm in proper alignment. So that's where I wanna start with the kick. And I wanna do the same thing again and again. I wanna repeat that movement. So I drill it in my head, remove all of those variables. Now, talking about the kick, the next step would be, what do I do with my legs when I get into a handstand? Now, the most difficult position with your legs is straight up and down, like this. If you see people walking a tightrope. Sometimes you'll even see them holding a stick to help their balance when they walk. So actually straddling your legs, splitting them out wide, can help you find better balance at the beginning till you build that strength in your forearms and in your hands to be able to fight back and forth, then you can find that straight line. So I teach most people walk that foot up and what I want is you to kick and to stay in a split. So that way I don't have to kick too hard. Instead of having to kick off this leg and bring it together, which is a lot of movement, I'm kicking and I'm leaving it down in this leg bends over behind me. Now, if I don't kick enough on the first one, I kick a little bit harder, not quite there. And then on the third one, I kick just a little bit harder. So three kicks is usually the perfect amount to find where you need to be. Now with this, I can use these legs to kind of adjust my body. So that is the kick. Now, after you've perfected that kick, after you've moved away those variables, you should start to feel a floating sensation where you're starting to get into that balance. Now this next step is gonna help you hold that float and turn it into a handstand hold. Okay, you've broken the fear of falling, you understand proper hand and finger placement, and you're starting to perfect the kick. That's enough for you to start practicing handstands every single day and slowly building that strength and comfortability upside down, and eventually you might learn it. But you can add in the use of a wall to really help you get into alignment and to build that strength quicker so you can progress even faster. So a lot of people handstand into a wall like this. Now, the reason I don't like this is because if you look at my back, it's completely arched. And if the wall wasn't here, there's no way that I'm actually holding that handstand. So instead, I'm actually gonna walk my way up the wall. Just move this microphone to the other side. So I'm gonna put my hands here. I'm gonna step up onto the wall, walking my hands back until I'm like this. From here, I can start to press away. I can get one leg into proper alignment and with the other toe, I can start to push off until I, I'm starting to float and I can find my way back to the wall. And this should be where you learn your handstand, right there. And then you just cartwheel your way down, nice and safe. So you'll notice my hands were about six, eight, maybe 12 inches off of the wall. My toes are also pretty long. And from there, I can start to push, as you just saw, until I get into that proper straight alignment. Now, the more time I spend upside down on my hands, the more I'm building strength in my wrists, my forearms, and my fingers. I'm also building strength in my shoulders because in a handstand, you don't want collapsed shoulders. You want to extend and push away. So the more time you spend inverted upside down, the more time you're building that strength. So by doing this, you can spend more time upside down. So try to give yourself sets of maybe 30 seconds upside down. Maybe challenge yourself for a 60 second wall hold. This is the tool that's gonna help you get there. It's gonna help you start to feel what it's like to hold a handstand for real. And shortly after this, you're gonna remove the wall and you're gonna do it freestanding. 
Let's move on to some strength techniques, different ways that you can train your body for mobility and strength to build what's necessary to hold this. All right, so you guys have all of the tools when it comes to the proper alignment, the proper form positioning, how to break the fear, everything that you need. Let me give you the tools necessary so that you can get in the gym at home or at the park and start training your body to build that strength. You should not only train handstands by doing handstands. There's actually exercises that you can do to help you progress even quicker. And I'm gonna give you a couple of them. First, you might recognize this from yoga, I'll do it this way, is crow pose. So knees on the back of the elbows, which makes me not have to use so much strength. So I'm counterbalancing, I'm kind of locked in. And what that's doing is allowing me to feel what it's like to have all of my weight on my wrists. Now, for people that are new to this, you really need to build that strength in your wrists. So this is a great way to do it. Knees on the back of the elbows, or you can bring them up into the armpits, depending on your mobility. From here, you float. And you'll notice, if you look at my fingers, my fingers are engaging and squeezing the ground. So I'm building that strength that I need in my forearms. So that would be exercise number one. You can practice those. Exercise number two is a headstand with some modifications. So three point headstand, hands here, head comes in front. I make a nice triangle. From here, I use my core to squeeze and straddle my legs up. From here, I can either practice just holding, although holding a headstand is not necessarily gonna help you learn a handstand, but we're gonna do exercises in this headstand to help build the strength for adjusting into a handstand. Now, in a handstand, you're not supposed to hold in an arch. Your spine's technically supposed to be straight, but that's very difficult for a lot of people when it comes to mobility and strength in your lower back and core. So, we go headstand, we straddle our legs up, we engage, and then we bring our toes back down to the earth, we touch, and then we come back up. And we touch, and we come back up. So, where do I feel that? Well, when I'm lowering those feet down, I'm feeling my forearms squeeze the heck out of the ground to build that strength. I'm also feeling my lower back doing those extensions, building that strength necessary. And you'll be surprised when you start to do a handstand, you realize that you'll see a lot of gymnasts kind of float their way into a handstand like this. You need to have that hollow body core strength to be able to hold that handstand. So here's another exercise you can do, holding what's called whale pose. The only part of my body touching the ground is my lower back. Now notice if I lay on the ground with my hands above my head, my lower back's actually not touching the ground. I can feel there's space under here. So what I wanna do is I wanna tuck my ribs, press my, my belly button into the ground, lift my heels, lift my mid thoracic, and lift my shoulder blades, and I hold, or better yet, I hold like this. Build that core strength. Now, last exercise, one of my favorites, a little bit more active. We're gonna do walking press-ups. Press up is getting into a handstand like a gymnast without bending your arms. You just float your way into it. Very difficult, but that just proves that the people that have that much handstand strength can do even more impressive moves. So we're gonna work on building that type of handstand strength because it's gonna even help you that much more at the basic level. So, press up walks. I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna bend my knees a little bit, placing my hands, bend my knees as much as I need to be able to float to my hands and kick my legs back. Just like that. I can lift my heels up for a second. I just wanna float. I'm not bending my elbows and I'm not letting my shoulders collapse. Nice and strong and I can do it moving forward too. So I come forward or I come backwards. And if it only looks like this, just for a second of floating, that's totally fine. Every time your body is under tension, every time you engage those muscles, you're getting stronger. All right, awesome work, everyone. You should now have my six expert tips to take with you to help you train and eventually to learn a handstand. I'm Adam Frater. Really hope you appreciated this one. Really hope you got a lot out of it. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.